Hey guys, this is Brian here from Tree for Medical. Last week we talked about the muscles of the anterior and medial compartments of the thigh, but this week we're going to talk about the muscles of the posterior compartment and also the muscles of the gluteal region. So using complete anatomy, we'll take a look at the muscles of the gluteal region first. Now these muscles generally attach to the pelvic girdle at one end and to the femur or tibia at the other. As a whole, these muscles are involved in movements of the thigh, such as extension, abduction, lateral rotation, and medial rotation. So the three gluteal muscles get their name from the Greek word glutos, which means buttocks. After that, their names speak for themselves. We have the gluteus maximus, which is the large one, the gluteus medius, which is the middle one, and the gluteus minimus, which is the small one. The name tensor fascia latae speaks for itself. It's a muscle that tenses the fascia latae and also the iliotibial tract. The piriformis muscle pretty much gets its name from its pear-shaped appearance. We have two obturator muscles. We have the obturator internus, which lies on the inner surface of the obturator membrane, and we have the obturator externus, which lies on the outer surface of the obturator membrane. The gemelli muscles get their name from the Latin word gemellus, which means small twin. The superior gemellus is the muscle that lies above the tendon of the obturator internus muscle, while the inferior gemellus is the muscle that lies below the tendon of the obturator internus. The last gluteal muscle is the quadratus femoris. This one is a very straightforward muscle. It's got four sides. So the next set of muscles we're going to take a look at is the muscles of the posterior compartments of the thigh. As a group, these muscles are involved in extension of the hip and flexion of the knee. We have three muscles in this region. We've got the biceps femoris, the semitendinosus, and the semimembranosus. The name biceps femoris is Latin in origin. It means the two-headed muscle of the thigh. It has a long head and it has a short head. The semimembranosus and semitendinosus muscles basically get their names from their appearance. The semitendinosus has a half tendon-like appearance and the semimembranosus has a half-membrane-like appearance. So that's it guys, that's the muscles of the gluteal region and posterior compartment of the thigh covered. If you want to learn about the muscles of the anterior and medial compartment of the thigh, be sure to check last week's video. Don't forget to subscribe to get even more tips about the human body with complete anatomy.